The king of the Jews does not need any introduction. Quotable quotes. And the historic background of the crucifixion. All of this and more coming your way next, so get your Bibles out and join us on BibleDiscoveryTV.com. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Rod Hemphrey. I'm Janice. This is Quick Study Television, a program designed to take you through the Bible in one year, and we do that chronologically this year. And we come upon something interesting today. As we focus on our yearly reading schedule, we learn that in Matthew 27 and Mark 15, we find a similar passage. The King of the Jews does not need to be announced. What in the world is that about? You have to stay here for, for that to make sense of it coming up in just a minute. But also we have Corey here. Corey, what are you doing today? Well, today and also for the rest of the week, I'm conducting a series of studies based around the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. We're going to be exploring it not only historically, but also critically and even skeptically. All right, historically and the study of the crucifixion mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ, very interesting. What are you doing today? Well, our focus today is Matthew 27 and Mark 15. I have decided to focus in on Matthew 27. Do you know who said this? Have nothing to do with that just man, for I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him. All right, that and more coming up. Stay there as we continue. I'd like to explore with you the wider history of crucifixion. I mean, definitely the most famous crucifixion in all of history thus far is of Jesus Christ. But crucifixion at the time when Christ was crucified already had a very long past. During the time of the Persian Empire over the Middle East, about 539 to 336 BC, crucifixion was widely used by the empire as a form of punishment and intimidation. So much so that crucifixion is often looked at as originating with Persia. However, the widespread use of crucifixion right away points to the practice being developed much earlier. Assyria, India, Scythia, ancient Britain, and even the Greek world all practiced crucifixion. One of the challenges to learning about crucifixion is that its cruelty was seen as distasteful, so it often wasn't spoken of in contemporary literature. And when it was, details were not often given. One thing was and is believed, however. Crucifixion is said to have originated from sacrificing victims to the gods of the underworld. Perhaps the most known application is from the Roman Empire. By the time that Jesus was crucified, it appears that Rome had it down to a legal physical science, prosecution, flogging to cause humiliation and pain, and then securing by nails to a beam of wood, often with a crossbar at the top so that hands could be nailed independently. If death was wished to be delayed, a piece of wood resembling a small bicycle seat would be fastened to the cross, relieving some of the body weight. Crucifixion became so common during the Roman period that this horrific execution, normally saved for criminals and Roman traitors, was more than once used in mass killings. In AD 70, during the siege of Jerusalem, it is recorded that General Titus crucified up to 500 escapees a day. While not every detail of every type of crucifixion is known, it is very clear from ancient sources that crucifixion 
equaled shame. From the words of Paul the Apostle, the revulsion of Greek Seneca, all the way to prejudice ancient graffiti, the shame of the cross was humbly carried and magnificently defeated by Jesus Christ. Understanding the history of the act of crucifixion uh, becomes very important when you take a look at the beginning of the church after Christ uh, was resurrected from the dead and after he ascended into heaven, then, then the church was left and the apostles were left uh, to spread that good news throughout the Roman Empire. But that good news carried with it a sense of embarrassment because Christ was crucified. Crucifixion was one of the most, it was the most unhonorable ways or dishonorable ways to be killed. So uh, that was the absurdity or the foolishness of the cross, uh, it, according to the outside world looking in. Well, what do you mean your God was crucified? That's rather embarrassing, isn't it? So then the church would have to reinterpret that. And, and even when you take a look at some of the third and fourth and fifth century Roman soldier graffitis, you see soldiers mimicking Christians uh, using derogatory symbols, for example, of a, a donkey being crucified on a cross representing Jesus. So it was one of the most absurd aspects of Christianity that, that somehow a God and a leader would be uh, would subject himself to the ultimate human humiliation. So a leader then was the person who was the supposedly the head in terms of the Roman Empire, but really this is a different thing because mm. it, you get into the crucifixion and you're dealing with leadership in different ways, spiritual leadership versus, yeah. and they really put it all together. Mm -hmm. You know, they said, well, the spiritual is really the physical and the physical is really the spiritual. Mm -hmm. But Jesus Christ here was, is still uh, saying that the, the spiritual leadership is the head leadership. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be very important as we continue to study on this particular journey. So stay there as we continue. Pilate tried to release Jesus Christ, but the time was set. The ball was cast into motion. Jesus Christ was willing and God is able. The crucifixion was established. It had begun. There was no stopping it. Matthew 27 and Mark 15 are the gruesome midst of the persecution and that whole process. It takes us a few days to get through it, but it is important that we carefully understand all of the parts of the crucifixion. So today we explore Mark chapter 15. The Bible is clear. We must know and we must understand this part of scripture. Mark chapter 15, verses 1 through 15. Immediately in the morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. And they bound Jesus, led him away, and delivered him to Pilate. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered and said to him, It is as you say. And the chief priests accused him of many things, but he answered nothing. Then Pilate asked him again, saying, Do you answer nothing? See how many things they testify against you. But Jesus still answered nothing, so that Pilate marveled. Now at the feast he was accustomed to releasing one prisoner to them, whomever they requested. And there was one named Barabbas, who was chained with his fellow rebels. They had committed murder in the rebellion. Then the multitude, crying aloud, began to ask him to do just as he had always done for them. But Pilate answered them, saying, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priests had handed him over because of envy. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd so that he should rather release Barabbas to them. Pilate answered and said to them again, What then do you want me to do with him whom you call the king of the Jews? So they cried out again, 
Crucify him. Then Pilate said to them, Why, what evil has he done? But they cried out all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wanting to gratify the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and he delivered Jesus after he had scourged him to be crucified. Mark chapter 15, verses 1 through 15. Thank you for being with us and staying with us. If you're just watching, this is Quick Study. It is, we're studying the scene where Jesus is being arrested. It's the beginning of the crucifixion. And it's a very important part today, Mark 15, and we're gonna be looking at this because it's interesting to see what Jesus did and how he responded in the time when they were coming to arrest him. And it's an important play, so let's take a look at it very carefully, beloved. Let's look at the overview. The overview begins like this. It says, strong crucifixion. Our reading assignment is Matthew chapter 27 and Mark chapter 15. Now, if you read this, that'll bring you to the place where you are chronologically in touch with what we're doing as we read through the Bible. The focus is on Mark chapter 15, verses 1 to 15. In this particular chapter, we're going to focus on what happened. Now, there are four points here, and three of them we'll discuss. Because the four points are on the written guide, if you don't have a written guide, make sure you write for yours so you can check it out. But the written guide is given to those who support the program. And we're going to study Mark 15 and talk about the first three. That's what we have time for as we enter into the scene of the crucifixion. Now, what are we to think about this? Where are we at? Well, looking at the scripture, it says in Mark 15, verses 1 and 2, immediately in the morning, the chief priest held a consultation with the elders and the scribe and the whole council. And they bound Jesus, led him away and delivered him to Pilate. And then Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? And he answered and he said to him, it is as you say. Now, what is interesting about this passage of scripture is there were a couple of days or a couple of times here, a full day covered in that reading. So Mark is not messing around. He's getting right to the point. But when he gets to Pilate, he slows down and he says, Pilate said this, Jesus said, it is as you say. Now, what's interesting to me about this is that Jesus Christ did not actually take it and make a proclamation at that point. He let that happen and let Pilate's proclamation stand. The king of the Jews is not a human task. Jesus Christ fulfilled it perfectly. Understand that the king of the Jews needed the people to explain and to tell people, well, who he was and what he was doing there. And Jesus allows this to happen. He permits this to take place and he allows it to happen, beloved, as you should pay attention because Jesus Christ is trying to communicate something to everybody who's listening. And that would be you and me as we read this as well. Now, let's go on to the next body of scripture. This is three to five. And Mark continues with a very interesting passage. He says, and the chief of priests accused him of many things, many things, but he answered nothing. And then Pilate asked him again, saying, do you answer nothing? See how many things that they testify against you. But Jesus Christ still answered nothing, so that Pilate marveled. So here's Pilate, he has Jesus up there, and the chief of priests and all the people are accusing Jesus of all these different things. He says, are you going to just let them accuse you? Are you not going to defend yourself? But he didn't understand. Pilate didn't realize why Jesus was allowing this to happen. Jesus was taking the sin of the world upon him. And the chief of priests and all those people accusing him of these wrong things were applying that to him. And he was taking the wound of the world's sin to the cross. Very interesting. And so we come to this point. The king of the Jews needs no announcement. Jesus Christ announced himself in silence because the people were accusing Jesus of these things, casting these things on him. 
he would be punished because of them, even though he did not do them. Now that's the explanation here that Mark gives us, and it's a very good one. And so remember, beloved, that Jesus Christ is doing this deed. He's doing this thing for both you and me, Jew and Gentile, all the world indeed combined. Now let's go to the next scripture. In Mark chapter 6 through 10, it says, Now at the feast, he accustomed to releasing one prisoner to them, whoever they requested. And there was one named Barabbas, who was chained with his fellow rebels. And they had committed murder in the rebellion. He actually murdered people uh, in the rebellion. Then they, the multitude, crying aloud, they began to ask him to do just as he had always done before them. But Pilate answered them and he said, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priest had handed him over because of envy. Now this is interesting. The chief of priests envied Jesus' position. And they envied him and they said, Release to us Barbaeus because we want Jesus to be crucified. And so Pilate knew this. He knew what was going on. He was expecting Jesus to defend himself and make it known, but he didn't. Jesus Christ allows himself to be fully charged and set up for the cross. And that brings me to this point. The king of the Jews needs no exposure. Jesus Christ needed no exposure. He knew what he was doing. Jesus Christ understood exactly what was taking place. He realized exactly what would happen when he went to the cross as standing in motion for all the sin of the world to take on him the judgment of the sin. And now the choice is yours. Because he rose again on the third day, the choice is yours. What will you do with Jesus Christ? Will you simply say, oh, he's a nice man and nice guy hung it? Or is he Lord? Is he the Lord of the world because he rose from the dead and appeared to many? You must decide. You must make a decision today on who Jesus Christ is. history, Pontius Pilate is most famous for his appearance in the gospel narratives of the New Testament. However, Pontius Pilate does show up in more historical records. So right now we're going to put him into his context. Remembered well for his sentencing of Jesus to death by crucifixion, Pontius Pilate has traveled through history by several contemporary sources. We have historians Philo and Josephus, an inscription bearing his name in Caesarea, and the Gospel records of the Bible. Pontius Pilate was the prefect or governor of the new province of Judea. In 4 BC, when Herod the Great died, his kingdom was split and given to his three sons, subservient to Rome. But the son ruling Judea was dethroned in AD 6. Judea named a province and a governor installed to keep peace. To be appointed governor, Pontius Pilate would have been of the equestrian order, a privileged class, and he would have had charge of auxiliary troops, which were a specialized non-citizen army equally deadly and numerous as the Roman legions. During his rule in Judea, Pilate got himself into one too many scrapes. Josephus records that one night he quietly brought Roman standards bearing images of the Roman gods into Jerusalem. This offensive act caused a confrontation with the Jews. Pilate threatened to execute them, but when they willingly exposed their necks to give the guards better aim, Pilate acquiesced and removed the standards. More controversy came when Pilate took money from the temple's treasury for an aqueduct and again when he made expensive shields naming the emperor as God and sent them to Herod's palace in Jerusalem. Pilate's interaction with Jesus came during the unstable time of Emperor Tiberius's great purge. Likely, Pilate's main goal was to keep everyone quiet so he could escape any notice at all. And yet, his one too many offense came soon after Christ's execution. 
Pilate put down a potential Samaritan rebellion by simply killing all the assembled men. To keep peace more peacefully, Pilate was pulled from office and sent back to Rome. When is it right? When is it wrong? There are principles guiding us in this fallen world to make good decisions about when to fight and how to fight. Join Corey, Janice, and Rod Hembry as they uncover the facts of war and learn what the Bible says about holy war. This video is critical for every believer to know now. When is it right to go to war? For your copy, write to us and send $25 as an offering or more to P.O. Box 150, Murraysville, Pennsylvania, 15668-0150. In Canada and the rest of the world, write to P.O. Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W5G2. You can also get this particular video at www.biblediscoverytv.com. For safe giving, give there. Thank you for staying with us here on Quick Study Television. I'm excited because as we go through the Bible, we get to learn things about we the do. Scripture. One of the things we get to learn is about the resurrection on the next program. We're talking about it. Luke 23 and John 18 to 19. Jesus Christ protected the integrity of his people. He dis, his disciples, rather, carry on his vision. Now, we'll talk about that and more coming up on the next Quick Study program. I uh, hope that you decide to uh, stay with us. Right now, we have the do you know question. Yes, we do. I focus today on Matthew chapter 27. Do you know who said this? Have nothing to do with that just man, for I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him. Corey, do you know who said that? I do. <laughs> I know this one. That would be the wife of Pontius Pilate. Did she get it right? She got it right. She absolutely did. Matthew chapter 27, verse 19. What I find fascinating, Rod, is we're reading through these Gospels is the, the absolute brilliance in the way that Jesus would have stood out in the times, in the confrontation with Pilate because he remained silent in this tumult of dynamics between the chief priests and, and the Jews rising up and, and shouting and screaming and even to the point where Pilate's wife would be awakened and tormented in a dream. I just, I just find it fascinating and that, that the spiritual atmosphere at that time was just full of tumult. And, and she was actually involved in the spiritual cultism, if you would, and uh, it's very interesting. But for her in that position to run to her yes. husband and say, look, don't have anything to do with him. I've been tormented in a dream. Don't, I mean, that, that would have taken a lot to drive her to do that. What's interesting about that is that Satan would have been all over the torture of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He would have been all over that. Mm -hmm. She withdraws from it and she's saying, wait a minute, this is not right. So there's a, there's a spirit there mm -hmm. acting that's involved with that, but that's acting differently than what Satan would be acting. But he, imagine in those scenes, all of the different emotions going on and stirred up. And yet there's Jesus standing he, quiet, peaceful. just quiet. Mm -hmm. And this is all going on around him. It's really interesting. So it's a kind of break loose, if you would, of the various spirits and, and so on. And I think it's very interesting, very good. We, want, we call her Livia, but we're not sure. Anyway, we're going to check that out. We're going to check that out, Corey, right? I know, Corey's looking at me like, I told you not to say that on TV. <laughs> anyway, listen, a quick... She's nameless in the Bible. She is. Pontius Pilate's wife is named... Uh, we, but we do get your names. Uh, I wanted to say this. This is from uh, Rachel in Sacramento. We have a lot of California listeners who watch on the Internet. And Rachel, you wrote me a letter, a real nice letter, by the way. Uh, this was some time back. And basically, here's what you said. You said in the first part of this letter, words 
cannot express my gratitude for quick study each and every evening. We used to get through, our, through it in our Apple TV, but we decided to get a Roku box, which gives us the luxury of streaming through the Visa, the TV uh, work. Well, the, we're on the Roku, and we're also on the internet with our new website. So we want to encourage you that we are there. To get the full impact of this ministry, go to BibleDiscoveryTV.com. Christ, King of the Jews, did the work needed to defeat the power of sin over us. He did it alone. No one was with him and no one helped him. He is the one who took the cost of sin upon his shoulders for us. We can be forgiven and have the power of freedom from sin if we choose to make Jesus Christ our King. The way of salvation is clear and it is strong. It demands that we make a choice. There is great strength for living when we decide to make Christ Jesus our Lord by following his word and his way. We pray and say, Lord, forgive me for my sin. I come to you and recognize that you paid the price and I choose your gift of salvation and see you as Lord of my life. Strength in Your Mind is a great piece of the program designed to introduce the Bible to you. Listen to this. Where does the Bible say? And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, who wrote that and where is it found? Now, if you think you know the answer to that, then go to Bible Discovery TV. It's a new website. It's pretty cool, actually and click on the bottom of the corner where it says strengthen your mind, you'll find it. And it's great. And I want to encourage you to allow Jesus to speak to you today. I want to talk to you right now about coming to Christ because we've talked about it. You may be afraid. You may be, you, there may be people that said, well, if you do this, you do No, just come to Jesus. Just come to Jesus. I ask you, come to Jesus and say, Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross and that you rose again. And I'm in trouble right now and I need you to help me. Come to my heart. I believe you rose again from the dead and after the cross, amen. Your personal power guide is available online, ready for you right this second. All you have to do is go to BibleDiscoveryTV.com and donate an offering in any amount. It will take you directly to your personal power guide, ready for you. Study with us, get your power guide today.